Yeah. All right, we are recording. Hi, Susan. Uh, thanks for coming out and telling us a little bit about the early days of the center and the community. And um, after 60 years, the center has seen a lot, been through a lot. And I guess in a way to plan for the next 60 years, it's always good to go back to where we started and how things began. And I guess maybe the first question is, Chicago had a lot of Indian organizations from 1900 all the way through today, but what was unique about the American Indian Center? Why did Indians living in Chicago want to create an Indian Center? What was the need? Well, you must remember pre-relocation. Relocation was an event that the government, the gov government is always coming up with uh, programs and the end result is always elimination of Native people one way or the other. So re that's what relocation was. And it, it coincided at the same time as the repeal of the Indian Liquor Law, which was 1954. It coincided with that because once they came here, even whether you drank or not, all of a sudden when you you know your history's been one, that you are different, you can't touch this and all that. So we, we had a bad period there of, of drinking that took over, but we were always really good settled people. Not, not many people fell into the wrong you know, lanes, which I'm proud of. But there were always Native people here, you know, from the very beginning, before we had a uh, city. So this was a crossing point. Remember, all the tribes were always going to and from Washington, D.C., where the business is transacted. So this was a stopping off point. Everybody, you could be sure the tribes in the Southwest, and certainly in the West, we knew Chicago. We stopped off in Chicago, and funny how without phones or whatnot, we had, they, they it went from word of mouth, and somehow we'd get back to people who were traveling across. There was a, a, an Indian woman in Chicago. If you got stranded or uh, something happened, you could get in touch with her, and somehow that phone number got around. That was the woman who I came to stay with in 1942. She was a friend of my mother's, and she was from my reservation. She was married to a white man was a pilot with American Airlines and uh, I came to stay with her because she was ill. She had three sons and they were already in the service. World War II was on and she was lonely and she was so lonely for home so even though I, I cleaned and did the cooking and did all that, she wanted me to sit there and talk about home because she was so lonesome and that's, that's what we all felt when we came here, this terrible loneliness which I still have. And, uh, Consequently, when, when the relocation began, when the government decided you know, it was time to move them into the cities, there were still some resources they had, couldn't get their hands on, on reservations. We still found each other, one way or the other. And none of us had big enough places, you know, most, we had, most had one room. And so eventually we knew you know, we needed a, needed a place, and we'd rent a place. And uh, the first place we rented was at 411 North LaSalle Street. We had two floors on the second and third floor. And uh, eventually we were able to purchase this through the generosity of one of our, our people, uh, a friend who had great interest in Native Americans. And she could see, she said, you're always looking for a place and you're always renting, you should own a place. And when she, when she stepped in, it was with a stipulation on that we have a place. And we were glad, we need each other for survival more than you, you know, more than we realize. Even, I, I live on the, the South Shore, and I'm, I'm so, I like all my neighbors and the people, but I'm so lonely sometimes to just see another Indian, and I ask my, my white friends and my black friends, how do you feel, how would you feel if you were walking down the street, there was not one white person there, uh, or there was not, you know, or my black friends, or there was one, not one black person, all Indians, you would feel lonely, you want to see somebody like you, somebody who knows something about your background and all that's still how I feel. So at 89, I'm still, you know, glad I can get up here now and then, you know, and, uh, and then I can still see, you know. But coming together, we were always, you know, one thing about us, my husband pointed out to me, he was non-Indian, and he said, you know, Indians are not haters, and you're not mean. You're not mean to each other. You may have spats and all that, but you're not. He said, I, said, I like to watch even the children, the way they play. They're not beating on each other, you know, doing cool things. And I think that we needed to, 
to for this for our survival to be to maintain our cultures, our cultures which were similar but still were different and we needed to learn from each other. But also in the back of our minds we knew we had something special and we wanted the outside community to have that specialness. And that specialness is the inclusiveness of drawing people close and of being good to each other and not judging everything on a materialistic basis. That's, I think, that we always felt we needed to somehow get out. Am I making some sense to you, Eva? Yeah, I think uh, Thank you, the center's uh, place amongst the different organizations, because I know there was uh, Indian Council Fire, Indian Fellowship League, there was, there was Bill Red Clock had the Indians for Indians, mm -hmm. um, and then Al Kobe had the Park District. That's right. Mm -hmm. Different things. So when there you a came, church groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you came, Scouts groups. groups and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So when you had all these different things going on, uh, Robert Reitz was the relocation officer over mm -hmm. at the BIA. Mm -hmm. What was it that took a group of community members that said, "We're going to build the Indian Center"? Because Eli, remember. We, when we were going into any, it, when we were, when we were, um, uh, uh, what's the word we were? Relocating? You know, mixing in with other groups. Mm -hmm. We're doing their thing. We had to do our thing. And that's the main thing. And our thing was totally not their thing. Not in a mean way, but I mean, it was, it was totally different. That's what we knew we had to, we had to have a place to be together. And, I wish you could have seen the early days of just even up on, uh, you know, on, on LaSalle, how we you know, we brought all the food, and the dance club uh, would have would go out and do. They would all work during the day, and they would do their gigs, you know, as they call the gigs. They'd go out and do different, and then they, to collect money, enough money to pay our rent, and we'd all find something to do to pay our rent. We didn't have access to agencies, and we didn't have the know-how of fundraise, you know getting money, you know, and I think, and I, I'm kind of proud of, of that, how we worked with them. Of course, we got had good white friends that came in and did help us and, and exposed us to different ways of, of uh, we didn't know we could get money from the city, for instance. You know, we didn't know any of that. We just said, we knew we had to pay that rent of a place if we wanted to meet, you know, get together. And were there, I know the center and its real history had different tribal clubs. Did the tribal clubs exist prior yes. to the center, or were they, did the center kind of consult? Well, see, at one time, when we came here, remember, we all came from a state where we knew only the tribes in our state. Mm -hmm. When I came, he came here, only knew Chippewa. We didn't say oh, oh, Ojibwe, we said Chippewa from Turtle Mountains. Or I knew some other Sioux, or I knew the, from the three affiliated tribes, the Rikaras, and we call the Rees, and the Mandans, and the Grovans from North Dakota, and then the Sioux, that's all. We only knew those from our state. So when, when all of a sudden, when, when uh, we came here, all of a sudden we meet somebody, I met a Navajo, I met someone. So they were as strange to us as, you know, as, as if they were coming from Europe or Asia or somewhere. And, uh, and, we, and we found out, like I said, our inclusiveness as Indian people, we found out how much we had in common and how much we liked still being together and how our lonely, it, back of it was always aloneness and the loneliness that we didn't find in the other cultures. Because, like I say, always remember, our culture is not based on materialism. You see, the other cultures all are. There's always a judge judging about the money thing and the importance of that, you know. So it, so we, we realize that, you know, the importance of our being together. And, uh, and, and, and it, 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 it's, it's been a great success, but no one has, I hope you guys can develop something that will will get out to the to the people somehow some sort of documentary that will show how different we are than other cultures. Without some sometimes people will get resentful. They'll think that we're bragging. We're not bragging. We just know it's it's a difference, and the whole world's beginning to know that now. This culture, such as it is in this world, isn't working so well. Maybe there's something that Native people have to go back to. Them. They have to bring us along with them. I don't mean. I don't mean going living in no woods or living in no tent. No way, I, you can't get me out in any tent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a, a certain kindness and a certain, uh, you know what I'm 
for to Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. The community, um, a, um, a, a family, the fact of the tribal yeah. uh, culture. Thank you, yeah. Living, um, uh, living and being in balance with, with, yes. with nature and with uh, other people and uh, yes. all, all of that. And that's yeah. very, very comforting um, and something really to, to strive for. And that, that bothers that bothers me that we we uh, we don't realize you know that we but we, we get torn like we say we have to beat anything but we we've got to reach out there and find other people with 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 uh, who know what who know what I'm trying to say very ineffectively uh, who know that we know the, the importance of a whole change in all of our culture to make us a be better people, mm -hmm. and since we're the leading uh, country in the world, you know, and uh, a lot, I think we have a big place to play in it. I don't think we don't how we don't know how to go about it yet. So I think we need the we need the we need another Dr. Saul Tax to come along. He was the University of Chicago. We need another Dr. Borman to come along. He was the University of Chicago too. We need some of friends like that who didn't come in with the idea of changing us. It was an idea of helping us uh, continue to our, our, our keep our cultures alive and to grow and to fit in with, with the outside culture, but not let it control us, but to influence it somehow. Does that make sense to you? But we don't have them anymore. So I think it's up to you guys to, to reach out and to try to find some people that are interested in, in the outside. Like we used to have a grand council at one time, and these were people who knew about us, who had, who had a great uh, respect uh, for na Native people, and they supported us in areas that we didn't know how to, how to support ourselves, and it's always the money thing, because we didn't come from that, see, so. Some of the early founders of the center, uh, I was wondering if you could talk about some of the, the early, the people who got the center started, uh, a little about who they were, and kind of their impacts on those early days. Uh, you know, like people like Bill Red Cloud and Angie DeCora. Mm -hmm. and just, if, you could, if you could speak about... Well, let me tell you something that what happened. When we first started, remember, <clears throat> we, we never separated people. Mm -hmm. When we have non-Indian people that, that uh, respect us in our ways and aren't going to come in to take over or change us, they become a part of us automatically. We never look at them as somebody different than us. And that's what we were fortunate for. That's, that's how a, a, a Dr. Tax had done anymore. But also, we had a Bob Reitz. He was our, uh, we, had, we had a couple director. Uh, our first directors were co-directors. They were only for a short time. And then the next one was uh, uh, Tom Segunda. And he was killed early. And he went back to Southwest because he was Pima. Pima, yeah, Pima. And then we had... Uh, we had Bob Reitz. Now Bob Reitz was as close to being the perfect Indian in the whole world, but he wasn't Indian. And he had no, he, he fought and worked every day of not trying to control and not trying to change us, but wanting us to always be there and to grow and do, do the, keep that culture alive and let it influence the outside big dominant culture. He was a wonderful person and he was with us for a, a, a long while. And I think that uh, sometimes, uh, we, we, we mustn't put other people out, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure we're careful about how we we, pick, we let them in because we can't get the controller when it wants to change us totally, you know? We have to have somebody come in like a Bob Reitz who could really appreciate our culture and then learn from that too. Because I say, like I keep saying, we have an influence on the outside dominant world more than we realize. And the, the, the warmth, those, those warmth of those days, like, I'm looking at that beautiful little Tebby over there, and I'm thinking of her her father. Her father, was, her, her mother is Indian, her father was white, like my, my daughter. And yet these men, intelligent men, her father was extremely intelligent, and so was my husband. They had such respect for our culture that they wouldn't even try to influence it in any way. They were just glad to be accepted as a part of it. Totally right, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's what's great about I think us. Andrew, did you have anything? Um, well, uh, 
um, with the with the founding members. Uh, can you recall who all who all they were? And yeah, well, what's funny? Funny. Uh, the founding members, I always tell a lot of people, they think it's only the board. I said, no, it's not just the board. Founding members are people who were there, like when, when wherever we met, who brought the food and they were there. Founding members. Mm -hmm. So I remember, one called me last night. She's Oneida, Mary Green Deer. There's three people from the old days left, Father Powell from uh, St. Augustine's and Mary Green Deer from Oneida and myself. And uh, we talked and talked and we were, we were talking about the old days and she said, it's not that way anymore, is it? And I said, no, Mary, it's not. What do you think's changing? She says, casinos. I said, no, we can't blame everything on casinos. Because you and I just have a casino. We have one. I never received a penny from it. And I, 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 and I don't want it. But uh, it provides jobs. But I don't know. I, I don't know. But we, we need, I think he, I, I feel for, for this young man and for you and you, you know, people that are interested here. I think you're going to, you're going to have to reach out and get some people from universities, whatnot, who, like I say, don't want to come in and change us and don't want to take over anything, but they want to see the new path that we have to we have to take. Not a new path exactly, but we have to we have to our strategy has to be a little bit different now. Be, Re reach out a bit more. Yeah, because even with my daughter now, so so she doesn't live here, so she doesn't. Somebody would say, "Why well, are you so interested in the center, Susan?" She doesn't, you know, your daughter doesn't even live in the city. I said, this was the most, outside of her home, this was the most important place in her life. Don't think that it didn't influence her in, in many, many ways. And I said, whether she's here or not, she wants it to be here forever. Likewise, that little one over there, all of it, you know, when you think in yourself. You know, I think about that, so. My husband grew up coming here. Yeah. Child. I mean, yeah. the memories he has. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, like I said, there's there's some, if you can get the right people out there to have a big conference with you, we can say, you know, because uh, well, we're not the only people that have answers, but have, no know, know what direction we must take now to influence a big, and to draw more Indians. Not necessarily here, some of them don't need the field, but they need to know it's here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I do think that I do think that we need to have a, it was funny when we started, one of the important issues that we had was we needed a monthly powwow. And why do you need a monthly powwow? Because there's nothing as much fun for young people to come in and dance together and be silly together and chase each other around and all that. And then, and then my husband, like I said, he was an Indian, he would say, you know, I sit here and I watch you all out there in the forest pack. No child, they, nobody chases the children off. There's someone just learning how to walk sometimes, toddling around the dancers. Nobody's chasing them off and saying, be careful. Nobody's knocking one down. You never see them fall. They'll dance around them and all, you know. He said, that's such an important thing. You don't see that anywhere else. And then he pointed out something else. He said, I was watching. This man came in. He said, none of you paid any attention to him. He was, he personal, he was, a, if anybody wanted to do a character of a hippie, he was. He was really a mess. He came in, and he stood there at the door. Did you notice him? I said, no. And he said, no, he didn't notice him, but I did. He said, he stood there, and he's first thing you know, he was out there dancing. And he was dancing these weird steps, and none of you looked at him. He just got out of his way to let him do his thing. He said, if you went to, to let's, let's say, if you went to Hollow, Michigan, and you saw all these Dutch people out there doing their thing, and you went in there and did that, they'd have called the police and arrest you. They chase you out. I don't mean just the Hall of Michigan, but wherever you know, other groups would do that. You know, and he said that's something very special about Native people. And I said that's probably how it was when <laughs> when the sur ships came over. You were inclusively, but come on, become a part of us. <laughs> you didn't know what was going to happen. Do you remember how Francesca Beltri came in? Remember what? You have to talk louder. I'm Francesca Beltri? Yeah. Do you remember meeting oh. her here? Oh sure, I remember Francesca. Yeah, Francesca and uh, and, uh, and her wonderful husband. They'd come in every day from Indiana. They were they they just worked with with the children. They just they did so much for the center. There were there were a lot of people that did a lot for the center. Never got the credit, and not, not that they wanted the credit. You can do it, but I do wish that. Please God, let me win the lotto, because I'd like to see a memory room of these people. You know, while they're still like your mom can start doing the history of some, you know, she's one of her mom's 
I always said this to him. When I'm gone, you're going to get it next because you're going to be the old timer. <laughs> you're going to expect to know everything about the past. <laughs> This is, it is a, it's, it's in a unique place. I'm not getting through, I'm not being able to express the most important part is the uniqueness of it that's important to a whole culture that we can't just, you, 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 your, your grasp, you know what I'm trying to grasp at, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll take some learned minds and all to bring us about to, you know, make some, Make another grand council, call it, call it something else, because the grand council was, you know, was it, I think you need, you need a, a council that's for what direction is the center going, what is the center about, what is the center contributions, because we have, whether we say it or we, we can't say, you know, to us, we have a contribution to make. If we were given a special country, and a special, no matter what happened to us, a special way of life in it, we have to be, ex you know, expose it to the, the world somehow, I think, and I think that our centers never started at one time under Bob Reeds, but we, we got into the, that's what we have to be careful of. We never let tribalism interfere that time, but then when we got our first Indian director, and then we got the next Indian director, and they were the same tribe, and then you'd have somebody else say, now look at, they're taking over. See, we have to watch that. But I think in today's, it's not that much, so much anymore because you're all group, group different tribes together, you see. I don't know if I'm making sense to you, but I yeah. sure hope I did. Now, how long were you guys at LaSalle, uh, at that location? LaSalle, oh gosh. Uh, we were there, let me see, we came here in the fall of 67, I think, 66 to 67. So we were there from about 53 to when we came here. Oh, okay. And we rented there, yeah. And I remember we had, uh, uh, it was so funny. Why did we decide to go to 411? <clears throat> because they, uh, for, you know, you, you, you get these impressions about people that are, are wrong, but there's a little, little bit of truth to it. Like, they say, well, those Indians are going to, now that they can drink, they'll find the bars. And that's true. There used to be bars on the Clarks. It's true to a point. I mean, there were bars on Clark Street, and when you forbid people from doing something, actually they're going to, ex ex you know, experience it, I guess. For the, and so we thought, well, let's make sure we have a place near, near enough, and also too, uh, closer to downtown, because if they come in on the train station, they can find us. The Bureau of Indian Affairs had an office downtown. Somehow they knew where we were, but they didn't care to go about to the Bureau of Indian Affairs because mm -hmm. you always had a hatred in a way for her, you know. Distrust, I should say, not hatred, distrust. Mm -hmm. So we were needed from the very beginning, you know, from the very beginning, from the day we opened, opened our door. And uh, like I said, we had no money, we had to pay our rent, but everybody brought food, we had affairs going on continuously, we bring kettles, you know, food. And you never went there without your, your, uh, your contribution for the meals. What, what was the office like? Was it? It was a little tiny place about as big as that little office out there. Wow. And uh, then uh, we had then we had the uh, other place where we danced in. And then eventually we got another floor, so we had a little bit big, a lot larger office. But what was important was we had the director who, under, who was with us along as Bob Breeds, who understood and who really had appreciation for Indian culture in Indian ways, you know. He, you know pushing us, we're going to make a modern office here, we're going to do this, we're going to have a modern reception. We're, no, you're going to do it, do it the way that we would do it if we were home, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the, bring the same friendliness in. And uh, like even now you'll notice when we get together, so first we what tribe are you? Or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. We're bringing a certain, certain family thing, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you're all of the, uh, yeah, good, good memories, very good memories. And, and also, too, we didn't go, for instance, I remember we didn't know what, what is this agency for when they take children away and put them in homes? F DCFS. What? DCFS. DCFS. Yeah. We didn't know about such things, but, but we know about a family. We'd say, well, somebody's having problems with their children. No. And one time, this one family had eight children. And somebody, you know, the director at that time said, well, this, this 
the what? DCFS. DCFS will come take them away, whatever it was we knew, the bad thing. So the oldest one here, Annie Winnichek, said, well, let's divide those children up. And so she said, well, Susan, you're not working. You can stay at home. So we'll give you, we'll give you the youngest ones that, you know, that, and, you know, and the families took them. So they did, and then, and then somebody said, well, we'll counsel them, the families, so they'll be able to get their children back, and then we'll give them back to them. Now, see, that was good Indian thinking. And nobody even knows that happened, but that's what it used to be. That's an important thing. When you think about it, you know, let children get put in these homes like they, they do now, you know. And so thinking about families and... Um, one of the things that I've realized is that there's a lot of couples that got together, you know, some in some kind of way, and a lot of times that they met at the, at the center at this building. Um, is that something that's been part of the history throughout the years that, that's always been going on? Well, without talking about it, I'm sure it was always a, a hope in our, in, in our mind, you know, was part of our thinking because we knew we are not a people, the only people on, on earth be proud of this that do not overpopulate the earth. So whenever anybody says, oh, we love the earth, no, no, we love the earth. We're not going to overpopulate it. And, you know, that's our mother. We're not going to overpopulate it. So, but we also know that small groups, we can die out. And hopefully, like I was hope, hopefully that my daughter would, would meet a Sue and marry a Sue. Didn't happen. But, uh, I married another Indian or something so we could continue, you know, to continue growing because I think we, we need to. Because way back somebody said, why, why, why? A non-Indian friend and I said, well, somehow, I don't, I'm trying to figure out who told me, my mother or who told us, legend was, when we are, it's not really a legend, it's a story that when, when if we are no longer on this earth, if we all expire or if we all become, you know, no, no more Indians here, then the rest of the, the world will, the rest of the people in America. So we have to be here for the sake of, of them all. And remember, the government is the only, I mean, we are the only people that the government makes you establish your identity. Like, I can look at you and meet you on the street and not know, I might ask you what tribe you are, but I'm accepting you immediately. Or I might meet somebody like her, and she might tell me she's Indian, maybe she also looks white, I'll accept her immediately, you see. But the government makes you uh, the, they have this rule, you have to establish how much, now, how dare they say you have to be a fourth or over to establish that you're called, you know. In other words, I have some, uh, some of my sisters and brothers have great-grandchildren that don't meet that degree, so even though their grandma's sitting there, they, they don't have to be considered, and that's a ridiculous thing. First, they say they have this lineage proof, you know, to prove lineage-wise and be accepted for that. But there's a, there's a, there's a lot of things left for us to do, I think, as, Indian, as Native people, for not just our interest, but the interest of the whole American people. Mm -hmm. Were there ever any weddings? Huh? Were there any any weddings here at the Indian Center back then? Any or what? Any weddings? Any weddings? Weddings? Yeah. Weddings? Getting married. Well, then, so we did everything. If you died, you had your wake here. You got married, you had your first time you were here. This was our place to 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 have have an affair, you know, any affairs that you needed. You couldn't, no one had a home big enough to have it, or no one could go pay rent. Nobody nobody knew about halls or places to get. Even if we did, we didn't have the money. You know, our our center, wherever we were, it was always a place for everything. And then also, what was always amazed me how 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 it became so known out into the reservations because we'd have somebody would unexpectedly come in and uh oh uh oh broke did it break nope it's gonna cost you all of your money for this pop year I mean year till you're 18 years old so it's uh